May I have a motion to return the regular board meeting to public session, please? Thank you, Mrs. Beeger and Ms. Poulin. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. I call the regular board meeting to order. All board members are present. Mr. Scanzuza, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that in the event of a fire emergency and an evacuation should be necessary, an alarm will sound. Please note all marked emergency exits and evacuate well away from the building. At this time, we request that everyone please turn their cell phones and other electronic devices to silent. Thank you. Is there a motion, please, to approve the agenda as presented? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. Is there a second, please? Dr. Singh, all in favor? Opposed, abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. We're moving on to item three, and Dr. Brown Hall, I turn it over to you for board recognition. Thank you very much, President Leatherboro. Oh, this is loud tonight, right? Power. <laughs> Powerful. All is loud. Tonight, we wrap up our school spotlight, which highlights the great work that goes on within our buildings. This year, we have seen incredible activities and accomplishments in our schools. Here's a quick rundown of the stories that we've shared with the school community. So Country Parkway was able to highlight their universal pre-K, Dodge Elementary School, their kindness challenge, Forest Elementary School, their book vending machine, Heim Elementary, their RISE, R-I-S-E awards, Maple West, their video announcements club, High Middle School, community building, Mill Middle School, all means all, Transit, their performing arts, Williamsville East, leading with compassion, Williamsville North was able to highlight their career center, and Williamsville South was able to highlight their Spectrum concert series. All of these features can be found on the district's YouTube channel. Tonight, our school spotlight focuses on Maple East Elementary and Casey Middle School. At this time, I'd like to welcome up Maple East principal, Dr. Bill Bowen, to share the importance and impact of their fun run. Welcome, Principal Bowen. Thank you, Dr. Brown Hall and the Williamsville School Board for recognizing our fun run at Maple East, which was held on Friday, May 20th. It was our first ever fun run. We hope to make it an annual event due to its great success. We're very proud it was a collaborative effort among the PTA, our wellness team at Maple East, and also the faculty. And our goal was twofold. We hope to not only promote a healthy lifestyle and active living, but also really bring people together and build community among the parents and teachers and students and staff at Maple East. So we invited the whole community, all the parents to come in and watch, cheer on their kids. Uh, kids ran a course around our back fields, which was mapped out by the PE team. The parents and the teachers lined the course and cheered everyone on throughout the event. Uh, we had a balloon arch finish line and all of the participants received a popsicle. Uh, so a good time was had by all. Like I said, we hope to make it an annual event. I want to thank all the people involved, including our PTA, our wellness team, our faculty and staff, especially the PE teachers and the CE teachers. And also Mr. Filipowski and Mr. Morales came out to uh, take some nice footage of the event, which we're going to share with you tonight. So thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to the annual Maple East Fun Run. We decided to do a fun run to promote a healthy lifestyle and encourage healthy living among our students. But we also thought it'd be a great community building event. We're very collaborative with our PTA. This was a mutually planned event between the PTA and the school. So we have a lot of parent volunteers for this event. We wouldn't be able to pull it off without our parent volunteers. When I put the sign up for volunteers to come, it was full within a few days. So the community really comes together to be with the kids, to see their kids when they're at school. So it's really awesome to have such a big event and everybody come together. Our program is based on 
success and positive interactions. And the more the kids can do that, the better they feel about what we're doing, the better they feel about themselves and each other. And if they feel great about what they do here, maybe they'll continue to go out and, and do it. Uh, we encourage them to run in the community and uh, have running be a part of their lives and uh, good health and wellness. And uh, that happens when we have good positive experiences here at school. And if we start that young, hopefully that carries through to adulthood. It's something they can do with their whole entire family. It's a great way to get outside and get some exercise, enjoy the fresh air, and promote healthy lifestyles. As kids, we get a lot of it, but as adults, we start to slow down in our wellness endeavors. And so we want to promote that as much as we can when the kids are little, so that that continues with them as they get older. These are the types of events when the kids are little that they remember and take with them. You know, a little break in the norm. I'm just happy that they get to have this kind of day where they're outside with their friends running around. Maple Leafs on three. One, two, three. Maple Leafs. Thank you, Principal Bowen. Now I'd like to invite up Casey Middle School Assistant Principal, Mr. Ryan Harding. So Mr. Harding is going to show us how an annual project in an English class has impacted students inside and outside of the classroom. It's a good one. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me here tonight to introduce our Spotlight video and the Correspondence Project. This is one of many authentic learning experiences the Casey staff have crafted to enrich the lives of all of our students. Mrs. Garber represents the best of education as there is intentionality, thoughtfulness, caring, but always a moral compass and a larger objective. As a result of this particular learning experience, our students are better able to find their voices, interact positively in the marketplace, and make a memory that they will take with them forever. As many of you know, Casey is a pretty special place, and you're about to see one of the many reasons why. The Correspondence Project is a project that I've done for about four years now, and it gives students the voice to contact a business of their choosing that they've interacted with, and they practice how to appropriately be a contributing member of our marketplace and share concerns or questions in a positive light. Anything positive that kids say to companies, they are met with overwhelmingly positive responses. I wrote in the letter how I respected them because they were just really cool. I was very surprised and I didn't believe it for like two weeks. I'm just like a normal 14 year old in a cold city. And I was surprised that an entire company, I guess, just reached out to me. A lot of people buy their products and stuff. I just felt special. I wrote to this company and they sell these soccer shin guards and they were really, really great. They're in really good condition. I wrote to them telling them how much I really liked it and like my whole like story of how like I found them because I had this problem and how they solved my problem. I mean, it feels really good that like someone heard what I had to say about it and they know that I liked it and they know that people like their product. I think companies need to know if their product is good or bad. The business letters really like provide that. I wrote to Upstate Farms. I really liked the milk that they served at school. They said, like, thanks for, like, all the time that you spent researching about us. They seemed really appreciative, and they felt, they, I felt like they were pretty cool about it. No student has ever asked for any materials or products to be sent to them, and in the last two years, they have almost all received really, really significant products. The letters are almost more amazing than the products that the students are uh, receiving. And it gives a real human element. Mrs. Garver is an amazing, amazing teacher. She's one of many amazing teachers that we have at Casey who really go above and beyond to create experiences for kids that will last for a lifetime. We want kids to understand that all their effort is not just for a grade. It's for a higher purpose. It builds them as individuals. And really, those learning experiences are the things that build kids into more complete humans. Mm. That is awesome. I'm writing Tesla as soon as I get home. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
phenomenal. Thank you, thank you both, Mr. Harding and Dr. Bowen. Thank you very much. Great school spotlights. We do have another recognition. So having over 20 years of experience in education, I've had the pleasure of working with many Board of Education members. Some good, some phenomenal, and some had to be removed. However, <laughs> I can sincerely say that both Mary Beeger and Suzanne Van Sice are of the highest caliber board members I've had the pleasure of working with. Some background on being a board member, this unpaid time intensive position. So it's an elected position. You're a representative of the entire Williamsville community as a public figure. You're available to listen to community and parent concerns all the time. You participate in school visits. You're a PTA or PTSA liaison. You attend committee meetings, policy meetings, audit committee meetings, the list goes on. It's not just one meeting per month. Board members do all of this for their children, their grandchildren, and for your children. To ensure all students in Williamsville continue to receive the high quality education our community has come to expect and that our children deserve. So as both Mary and Suzanne sit here for their last meeting this school year, I wanna extend my sincere appreciation for the job you have done for the past six years as Board of Education members. I know that you will still contribute positively to this district and continue to serve the community in other ways. On behalf of the entire Williamsville district, thank you both for your hard work, your tireless work that you put in for your Board of Education position, for the district, and for the students. You will be truly missed. want to give um, anyone at the board table an opportunity to recognize um, either Mary or Suzanne. I am Dr. No, Lefanis. Stop on this side. <laughs> um, you know, I guess I've already been through that part of it, leaving the board, now coming back. But, you know, it's an emotional situation. Uh, but, you know, I've worked with uh, Mary and Suzanne this one year. And, you know, I was very impressed by their intensity, their knowledge, their, you know, good heart and just the way they are. I mean, the way they use their knowledge in education to share with us and to help improve our uh, district, to me, is very commendable. And, um, you know, you're always welcome to come back, <laughs> visit or run again down the road. Does anyone else wish to make any comments? Um, I met Mary when... Um, we were handing out flyers in Klein hands for an event by the Partnership for Smarter Schools, which I believe Dr. McKenna, you were a part of that event, where we were um, speaking out against high stakes standardized testing, its, it's ties to APPR, and just um, a shift that her and I both noticed was happening in our classrooms, where we were focusing more on have heavily on nonfiction and not so much on fiction in our literature. And um, we were removing things like the play centers from kindergarten classrooms. There was no time for recess because everything had to be test prep, test prep, test prep, test prep. And it didn't sit well with me as a teacher and it didn't sit with, well with me as a parent. And so I decided to do something about it. And, um, I opted my child out from an, ex a, a, I think it was fourth grade exam. And I was told by the principal at that time that I was the only parent that was doing this. <laughs> and I met Mary at Klein Hands and we found out we were both Williamsville parents and that we both had our kids at the same school and she was told the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> And um, we, I just only the only two kids, though. We were the only two. <laughs> the only two in the world. Um, and uh, you know, it just history just kind of went from there. And then we, I met Suzanne when we were running for the school board because we ran, Mary and I ran together, and we met Suzanne because she also was running. And I just want to say it's been a privilege to have you as board mates. You have always advocated for the students first in terms of their academic, social, physical, mental, all around well-being, always putting them above everything. And um, Suzanne, I wanna just thank you for being an outstanding, 
vice president. Mm -hmm. I think that we have balanced each other out very well, which has made for strong leadership through some um, very interesting times. And we'll always have that as our memory. So I'm glad that you both get to, for you, Mary, spend more time with your family while your children are still young. And um, Suzanne, I know I'll see you because you will be our president at North High School and we both have children there. And so thank you so much. And with that, does anyone from the board have any other acknowledgements? Mr. Biscalia. I just want to acknowledge Maple West PTA, the administration, the faculty and staff. I had the honor on Monday of um, joining their kids day. And it's nice, again, I keep saying this this year, but kind of see the school district and uh, schools getting back to some normalcy. Uh, the joy on the kids' faces throughout the activities and the day were wonderful. Um, and, you know, one of the best parts as an educator, seeing the teachers interact with the kids and, and you know, seeing them run around with them in the activities was even, you know, enjoyable uh, to see that because the kids, I mean, that's what's important. As you were just stating, you know, we have the privilege to always look out for students and, and their emotional needs and all things like that. And, and that's what I got to see on Monday. It was, it was a great sight. Um, kids laughing again is just, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> with everything going on in the world, it's really mm -hmm. nice to see. And um, the PTA did a wonderful job. There were so many parents there as volunteers, and it, it was just wonderful, you know, um, to center around the social emotional learning again, you know, rather than the academics, which are very important. But, you know, without those social emotional aspects, the academics don't come as well. So it was really nice. And I want to, you know, acknowledge that the PTA and the parents uh, did a great job. Thank you, Mr. Bissett. Thank you. Um, before we go back around, I just wanted to ask, and I forgive me, I forgot to do this, if either Suzanne or Mary wish to say anything about their experience as oh, board yeah. members at the table. Um, I'll say a quick something. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, I guess for me just to reflect really quickly on these six years, um, they've been uh, there's, there's been a lot of shifts in a pandemic and, and a, a lot that has happened over the six years. And when you get into this, you know, I ran some of the concerns that you mentioned, um, wondering about educating the whole child and um, why don't our kids have recess and, uh, you know, worry about class size, things like that. The shifts that I have seen over the six years in this district have been phenomenal. Um, the things that were happening in the district that I didn't know about until I became a board member were also phenomenal. And that was a really big learning experience for me. Um, I was a student here, I grew up here. You know, you think you know everything about these schools and I was a parent here, so I really knew everything. Um, and then I became a board member and I learned um, what our assistant superintendents do, what their department does, what the superintendent's responsible for, what our administrators are leading at schools, what um, you know the responsibilities that our custodians have, what our bus drivers have to do to make their schedule work. I mean, the players, the teachers, the professional development, this is such an incredible district. And um, and walking away, I mean, I could list a lot of things we could improve upon. We can always improve. Um, but I'm walking away feeling so proud to have had this time. Um, so impressed with our leadership for instruction and, and the way that our kids truly um, are being met. It's not just about the test prep like we were worried about six years ago when we were uh, when we came to this table and wanted to have a seat here instead of talking at the podium. Um, we have leadership in this district that truly cares about children. Um, so much strong leadership that they really, um, you know, fr from the uh, every role you can think of, people are here to serve kids, um, their social emotional needs, their academic strengths to support their challenges. And uh, I'm just really, really grateful for the opportunity, for the connections that I've made um, and for the work that will continue on when I'm not here at these meetings. I am excited to have more time with my family, but um, I'm grateful for our superintendent um, who's leading the way in such a positive and beautiful way and everyone else. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm grateful um, and I feel blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. 
Ken, did you wish to say anything? I do. So, of course, I had to write mine down, and I'm sorry if I don't look at people um, so that my emotions don't get to me. Um, but I would like to take this time to make a couple well-deserved acknowledgments. Um, I personally reflected and felt this was most important to me at this time because I feel without these individuals, this district would not be operating the way it is. So first, Mr. Nick Filipowski, our communication extraordinaire, and Mr. Dave Morales, your proficiency and savvy skills are beyond impressive. Thank you for your passion in ensuring communication, that it's constant and consistent. You truly are an asset to our district. Thank you, Nick. To Mrs. Lori Concianetti and Mrs. Lynn Carey. Your devotion and efficiency is so appreciated. I would like to personally highlight your enthusiastic demeanor and continuous level of support that you display on a daily basis. Please know how very grateful I am for you both. Thank you. <laughs> to the leadership team, Mr. Matursky, Dr. Balin, Dr. McKenna, and Mr. Scanzuzo. The knowledge and expertise you each hold is extensive and invaluable to our district. I respect each one of you so very much and hold great value in all you do as it has had such a positive and measurable impact on each of our schools and every one of our students. So thank you. <laughs> and Dr. Brown Hall, for your vested interest and desire to step up during an unsettling time to lead our district. Not only am I so appreciative that you seized the opportunity and embraced the challenge, what a challenge it was, but you have done it with such dignity and grace, which has created a culture that has brought out the very best in others, in our board, in our staff, in our families and parents and in our students. Thank you so much. We are so very fortunate. Thank you. I appreciate it. In closing, it, yes, sorry. Yes, absolutely. In closing, it has been an honor for me to serve in this capacity. I am so thankful for having had the opportunity to be involved. This is not a goodbye, as I will remain committed, committed and dedicated to this district and to our students. And with that, never give up, fill your bucket, make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And Dr. Lippman, I saw your hand up for one final acknowledgement. And I have three or four dozen, but uh, I'll try to keep it short. The best one. Um, what's that? Give us the best one. No, I'll give you everything I have. Um, you know, just um, echoing what Mr. Viscagli said about uh, PTAs. Uh, you know, I just wanted to, at the end of the year, uh, give some recognition to all the PTA, PTSA parents who worked very hard through the year. Uh, to provide time, energy, and especially financial resources to uh, help our young people. And that ties into something, the next part of it, which is the um, Maple West PTA donating uh, a large amount of money and the Maple West faculty and staff also donating money for an adaptive playground. Uh, the second thing was a shout out to athletics, um, to all of our student athletes and coaches who work very hard they may not always win every game or match, but again, the skills of life you learn from being involved in athletics, the sports skills they carry over into life are very valuable. Okay, my last one. They're great. Yeah. Um, and, and as many of you were aware, I was part of the Distinguished Visitors Program focusing on DEI with the Department of Defense. Uh, I was one of nine individuals from the United States who Went down to Jacksonville Naval Air Station, flew on a plane onto the USS George H.W. Bush, which was out in the Atlantic on training before deployment to look at uh, DEI initiatives for the 5,000 uh, sailors uh, and people on the ship. Uh, basically, we were sharing ideas what they were doing, sharing ideas from other parts of the world, uh, again, to try to make things work better. Uh, an outcome of that is to help in recruiting a more diverse population of uh, military people to serve uh, as offices and in our military, because again, 
um, they are our best and the brightest. So, um, yeah, that, it was a very interesting situation. Um, the people are amazing. Uh, as was catapulting off an aircraft carrier at 160 miles an hour in from zero to 160 in less than two seconds. Oh. And it's just so you know how worried it was I was about this. I left my will on the table for my son in case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're glad you came back. I'm glad. Really be. awesome experience. Thank you for sharing this. And I just want to share that on behalf of the board, we want to wish all of our students well as they finish up final exams and end of year activities. We congratulate our seniors as they prepare to close one chapter of their life and begin their next chapter. We congratulate all of the parents who have supported their children and their education and wish all the members of our school community a safe and enjoyable summer. And with that, we will move on to item number four, which is public expression. I call on our board parliamentarian, Mrs. Kazmarek Bogner, to review our public expression format. Thank you, President Leatherbarrel. Welcome to all who've come to uh, me, observe this regular board meeting. Per policy 1510, the board allows up to 30 minutes of public comment, a time when we invite members of our school community to share ideas, opinions, and concerns with us. While we are here to listen carefully and we take your concerns seriously, public comment is not designed to be a discussion. Therefore, please do not expect us to respond tonight. Instead, we will, uh, you will receive a response by email after our meeting. Because we want to maintain mutual respect and civility, please ensure that comments are delivered in a respectful manner to the board directly. Also under state and federal privacy laws, we are unable to entertain any comments related to employee personnel information or any topic that may disclose information about a particular student. On these matters, we ask that you go through the appropriate administrative channels. Please note that individuals are required to sign up prior to our meeting and each speaker is allotted three minutes for comments. You'll be signaled at two and a half minutes so that you may conclude your remarks. And at this time, we will begin our public comments. After I call on you, please step up to the podium and state your name. And we only have one speaker signed up tonight and that would be Michelle Yarrow. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michelle Yarrow, and I have a daughter at North High School who's going to be a senior and a son who is going to be a first grader at Dodge Elementary. Um, and I'm going to talk about the uh, before school care at Dodge Elementary. Um, I've been working on this for the entire school year um, tirelessly. Um, and according to Williamsville Transportation, there's only one option for daycare busing before school within the Dodge Elementary School District's busing route which is a private home of a senior citizen in the Ransom Oaks area. She is wonderful. However, when sickness, injury, or just life happens, parents who send their child to catch the AM bus with her are left with no other options. This is what happened this past year in January. Due to an injury, we are forced to rearrange work schedules, rely on grandparents to arrive at our house by 6.30 in the morning, and had to switch our busing back pick up back up to our home with the transportation department to put our youngest on the bus. With no Dodge before school program or busing from one of the other AM programs through Just for Kids, it leaves many parents scrambling in the morning. Just for Kids operates AM programs at Country Parkway Elementary, Maple West, Casey Middle, and Transit Middle. I understand busing was an issue this year with bus driver shortage but the Dodge Elementary families are in a daycare desert with no options to even drop their child off at another location, either with Just for Kids or another private daycare facility such as Doodlebugs on Transit or Briarwood on Hopkins. Dodge Elementary does begin its day earlier than most of the other elementary schools in the district. However, when you start work early, myself, I start work at 7.30 in the morning, and my husband has a variety uh, of varying schedule from day to day, it does not matter what time school starts. We still need before school care. I thought there was a solution when Just for Kids told me I could register our son for before school care at Country Park where in Maple West and Williamsville would transport him to Dodge. It has been done in the past according to Just for Kids. However, I was just informed last week that Williamsville will not be busing from other Just for Kids locations to Dodge Elementary. Currently, there are about 10 families that have signed up for before school care at Dodge through Just for Kids. Unfortunately, it is not enough. 
cost wise for just for kids to run the program with so few students. They would need about 20 families. Just for Kids has informed me that part of the issue is the cost, around $300 a month for five days a week, and it would only be for about an hour of care. I understand this, however, it does not fix the problem that there is no daycare in Dodge that the bus will pick up my son from when other elementary schools and middle school families have many options to leave their children in a safe and reliable environment before school. I'm asking the superintendent and the board of education and the school district to reconsider offering busing from either the just either of the other Just for Kids locations at Country Parkway or Maple West or any other daycare facility beginning with next school year or another solution offering a in-district program at the school itself run by district employees would be helpful as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Yarrow, for your comments about uh, before school care. Thank you. And that concludes our public expression for today. Yes. Thank you very much, Ms. Yarrow. I, I didn't know that Dodge didn't have a morning program, so I really appreciate you bringing all the information to us. And I'll be sending you an email response within the week. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're moving on to our consent agenda. May I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda items six personnel, seven business items, and eight special needs and student activities? Thank you, Dr. Lippman. May I have a second? Dr. Singh, thank you. Is there any discussion? Okay, I'm going to ask Mrs. Carey to lead a roll call vote. When you are called on, please vote yes or no and list any item numbers you are abstaining on. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Oh, Barrow. Looking at that way, I'm like wondering where you went. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just go from uh, to my left all the way around. Uh, Dr. Singh? Yes. Yes to all, or, or if you want to say accept, it's abstain from a certain yes, number, but if it's yes to all, yes, I'm consent? Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Dr. McClary? Yes to all. Mr. Biscalia? Uh, yes to all, but I'll abstain from number 53. Ms. Van Seis? Yes to all. Mrs. Leatherbarrow? Yes to all, no exceptions. Ms. Kazmarek Brogner? Yes to all. Ms. Speaker? Yes to all. Ms. Poulin? Yes to all. And Dr. Littman? Yes to all. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the Board of Education extends best wishes and gratitude to the following retirees for their service to the district. In addition to the ones I've been announcing each month, this month we have <clears throat> Mary Faraka from East High School with 19 years of service, Marilyn Twark from North High School with 11 years of service. We want to <clears throat> and at this time, I would like to call a recess in order to hold a reception to honor the tenured employees and retiring board members and there's not a lot of us, so we better be eating a lot of cake. <laughs> All right, so we will take a brief free sauce, about 15 minutes, okay? Thank you. Mm.
That's what I was. Oh. All right, we are now returning from our recess. Thank you everyone for celebrating with us. We're on item 10. Is there a motion please to approve the minutes from the May 24th regular board meeting in agenda items 10A? Thank you, Ms. Kazmarek Bogner. Thank you, Vice President Van Sice. Are there any corrections to the minutes? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. Thank you. Motion carries 801. President's report. There are a bunch of events listed in the President's report. Let me just scroll down here. Not a, got it. Okay. Sorry for that. Um, there's a bunch of, of uh, events listed in board docs. And Board members will also be in attendance to hand out diplomas for our graduation ceremonies on Saturday, June 25th. And Mrs. Beeger has requested to speak at the North High School graduation and all board attendees are listed with the time for each ceremony. Are there any corrections to any of that information that's listed? Thank you. Is anyone else interested in attending the Western New York Law Conference? has information provided. Right now, Mr. Bulin and Ms. Fleckinger will be invited, um, but just, just checking to see if anyone from the board is interested in attending. Okay, thank you. And I do understand that Dr. Brown Hall, Mr. Sanzuzo, Ms. Cooper, and Dr. McKenna will be attending from the district. Mm -hmm. We had our last school visit on June 7th. We went to Dodge Elementary School and district office. Thank you for to everyone at district office, to all of our assistant superintendents for taking us around and introducing us to all of the individuals that work with you and also for us to be able to come in and see all of the spaces. It was fun. I never got to do that before, so I, I enjoyed that. Um, let's see, Erie County Association of School Boards. There are upcoming and recent events that are listed. A few of us did attend. The award dinner the other night, which was very nice. And um, there was a raffle donation that was provided on behalf of us as a board, not through tax uh, payer funds, but through us individually. There is um, governance and fiscal oversight training that will be ongoing through ECASB. And does anyone have anything else they wish to report from the Erie County Association of School Boards? All right. Under NISBA, which is New York State School Board Association, please let Mrs. Carey know if you would like to register for the NISBA 2022 Summer Law Conference. That information is in your board packet. And also to save the date for the NISBA convention and business meeting, which will be held in Syracuse this fall. And I did hear um, or read in one of their uh, updates that the hotel situation is going to be a little catchy because it's not one, like usually they have like one hotel that they designate, but this mm -hmm. time it's going to be sort of like all around town and there'll be different shuttles. So we will need to notify our district clerk at the reorg meeting if we are interested in attending the convention so that accommodations can be made. Does anyone have anything else to report under New York State School Board Association? All right, we are on item 12 and Superintendent Brown Hall, I will turn it over to you for 12A, 12B and 12C. Thank you very much, President Leatherborough. So 12A is the community update. 12B are the 2021-2022 district goals progress report. And 12C is a wellness council report. And um, I believe assistant Superintendent Skinzuzo will give a quick intro, and then we have a video that goes along with that. So the community update, being that it's the last one of the year, there's quite a bit of information in here, so it is a bit dense. So I'm going to take my time just so that people are able to rewind and play it again to get the accurate information. That's what we're always after, right? Accurate information. All right. So the first, first, first thing we're going to do is get a remote that works. <laughs> there we go. Safety and security. And Nick always preps me. He gives me like two or three of them so I can make sure I have one that works. All right. 
So as you all know, safety and security remains the district's top priority. With the very unfortunate events that have occurred in the United States, this is always our top priority. And again, if you see something, say something. It's really important. And we appreciate when students do that. We appreciate when parents do that. And we appreciate when staff does that because we're able to get right on any situation to get to the bottom of it. And so construction has begun on our new secure entrances at our schools. If you actually go into, I believe it's item 18 in board docs under the facilities report, you can actually see a picture that uh, Mr. Materski has uploaded on some of the construction work that's taking place. But our new safety and security project is taking place at some of our school buildings all of our school buildings will be complete by the 23-24 school year. But we have, you'll see trailers outside of schools like Mill Middle School. That's because their front entrance is being worked on. So we do have some of our schools under construction now. The other schools will be under construction next summer, and they will all be complete by the 23-24 school year. And our schools, it also features a new lockdown feature that's going to be installed. So we'll be able to talk more about that and show a demo at future board meetings. Climate and Communication Survey, that survey was launched a few weeks ago. So the survey is really to allow the district, the board, to get important data from the parents, the staff, the students, so that it can inform our decision making, it can inform our goal setting, and it can, can inform the way we communicate with families. So the survey will close on June 24th. And each survey is definitely anonymous. I know there was some concern about that, but each survey is anonymous. The information is to gather a district-wide overview from stakeholders. And if you have any questions regarding the survey, they can be emailed to surveyresponse at williamsvillek12.org. Regents exam special appeal. So before I get started, I do want to make an announcement. I know many parents have already received communication this evening about calculators for the Regents exams. Now, calculators will be provided. Oh, because oh, I'm talking. Got it. Calculators will be provided for the Regents exams. However, if you have a calculator that had been assigned by the school, be sure to bring that to the exam. Right. So we'll provide calculators for like the living environment exams tomorrow afternoon. If you don't have a calculator, it will be provided. But if you're in a math course and a calculator was provided for you, make sure you bring that calculator to the exam. OK. And we did send out communication for clarification purposes earlier this evening. So the Regents exam special appeal. Now this, we sent information out also, and this is very dense. There's a lot of information here. However, this appeal is in place for students that must take the Regents exam this June, August, 2022, January, 2023, June, 2023, or August, 2023. Any of those test administrations. If a student scores between a 50 and a 64 on the Regents exam, that student is able to appeal as long as the exam was taken during one of those administrations I mentioned, right? The student has attained a course average that meets or exceeds the required passing grade by the school, and it's recorded on the student's official transcript. So if a student has passed a course, but they receive a 50 or a 64 on the Regents exam, that's been administered during any of those times, they're eligible for this special exam appeal. So we do have memos from the New York State Education Department that are hyperlinked here. They were also hyperlinked on the notification that went home. So parents are able to initiate the appeal. The student is able to initiate the appeal. And then we're going to look because we want to make sure that no student is missed in this appeal process. So I did want to talk about parent-teacher conferences because I know in recent conversations with parents, I, I don't know if there was some confusion after the last meeting when I made it clear about parent-teacher conferences, but I do want to make it clear now that we have one set parent-teacher conference in the school year. We encourage other parent-teacher conferences, but we want you to look outside the box, right? 
They don't have to look like a traditional parent-teacher conference. We encourage parents at any point in time to let a teacher know that they're requesting a conference. It could be in person, it could be over Zoom, but parents are able to do that at any time. And teachers also reach out to parents at any time if they feel they need to, to discuss any social emotional learning or to discuss any academics. So it does go both ways. So although a parent-teacher conference may not look like the traditional parent-teacher conference where either school is canceled or you have a scheduled date in the evening, we encourage parents to make sure you're initiating parent-teacher conferences and teachers will too, all right? Just wanted to be clear about that. Health and safety. So we have set the dates for the summer at home test kit distributions for the COVID rapid test. And those tentative dates right now are Thursday, July 14th and Thursday, August 18th. More information will be coming. We will be doing the distribution here at district offices. So we're going to have an easier system set up. So you come in, pick up some test kits and be on your way. But we, we, we have such a plethora of test kits available. We want to make sure families get them in their hands. Foundation aid update. So these slides are very similar, the foundation aid update and the ARP aid update. So the, our total increase in foundation aid is $5,273,570. So we're following the same process as we did this current school year for the 2022-2023 usage of funds. The usage of funds complies with the New York State requirements, social emotional learning, support for learning labs, supports for English language learners. The detailed plan can be found on the website, www.wimsvillek12.org, and community feedback can be emailed to New York State Aid Comment at wimsvilleK12.org. So I know a lot of times families, parents, community members ask, how was the increase of foundation aid utilized? You can see the entire breakdown in the detailed plan on our website, and then we ask that you please send any comments to that website, I mean, that email address. We have to compile that and then send that to the state. So it's really important that we get all of our constituents looking at that plan and then making comments, okay? So we really appreciate that. In addition, the ARP, our total ARP allocation is over $4 million. We're going to follow the same process for the 2022-2023 school year as we did this current school year. And we list here how the funds were utilized, SEL, social emotional learning, support for learning labs, summer education, professional salaries. The detailed plan is on our website. And for the ARP money, we want you to please email any community feedback to ARP comment at WilliamsvilleK12.org. So this information is in the community update and board docs, and we'll make sure these plans are easily accessible on our district website. All right. And so we don't want to have them buried. We want them to be easily accessible because we do want our um, stakeholder feedback. Internal communications to staff. So an additional memo was sent out to all of our staff earlier this week or last week, um, the date last week. Right, Nick? Yes, there we go. Mine also. So the district will be transitioning to Gmail for internal communications for faculty and staff beginning in the fall or winter. So the email address of every staff member will remain the same. The transition to Gmail will have no impact on Wixmail. And informational items regarding this transition, such as a video tutorial and an FAQ document, will be available. So we'll make sure we'll get that out to staff, but we wanted to make sure we get the information out early so that our staff members can begin to really go through their Outlook email and really discard what you don't need. You wanna detach items that are of importance to you, save them to your desktop, save them to a zip drive, all right? Because we will be transitioning to Gmail. Summer school information, our summer school connection newsletter, our summer school website, everything is set up if you, for all the information you need. So summer school information for grades K to 12 is available on the district's website. If you have any questions, we have listed our summer school principals and assistant principals here. For elementary and middle school, the principal is Heidi Buffamonte. The assistant principal is Patrick Quast. For high school, the principal is Courtney Charleston-Smith. The assistant principal is Nick Suhana. 
And for special education, the principal is Kate Winling. Now, the elementary and middle school summer school will be held at Transit Middle School. The high school summer school will be held at East High School. And the special education summer school will be held at High Middle School. Very exciting. Flag football. So the district plans to add girls flag football teams for the 2023 spring season at Williamsville East, Williamsville North, and Williamsville South. So teams or practice begins in May and June of 2023. Student athletes will be allowed to dual participate in spring sports. So I know that was a concern with other sports that, you know, taking students to play flag football, you will, they won't be able to participate in other sports. So dual participation will be allowed. Grants from the NFL, NFHS, and NYSPHSAA, NISFA, fund the first two years of participation. 12 schools in Western New York participated in the pilot program this year, and it's projected that all Western New York school districts will have a flag football team in the next one to three years. So this is very exciting. And that's the community update. All right, thank you. Does anyone from the board have any questions or comments? Dr. Littman. Yeah, I have a question on the climate survey and communication survey. Yep. Just uh, what will we be doing to uh, enhance the response rate from the uh, people out there in the world? Well, what we're trying to do constant reminders like the one I just did. Okay. We're also sending out um, our communications department is sending out text messages um, every week to remind parents and, you know, faculty members and staff to please complete the survey because we do want a high um, completion of the survey. So we have very rich data. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll just add that's very quick and easy to complete. So I want to just encourage everyone to please complete it because it really only took me a couple minutes to do. Awesome. So I hope that people will take advantage of that because it's a way to provide input. And we always are looking for ways for our stakeholders to give feedback. Yes. Thank you very much. I do want to, if Nick will um, help me, I want to walk through the process of accessing the 2021-2022 district goals progress report. Because the report is so dense, I want our community and everyone to really review the document so you're able to see all the detail that went into it and all the progress we made this year on our district goals. And the final column I'm going to need you, after I finish talking, if you can go back, Nick, and take it step by step. I appreciate that. The final column is very important also because the final column is the next steps column, and that's important. So we've done this. We've done our strategic plan. What's next? We are in the process of working on a DEI district-wide plan. So what are our next steps? We have our meeting set up. So that final column for next steps is very important. So this is a very dense document. We had goals and every department. So I encourage everyone to please go through and read these. It talks about communication, enhancing communication in the district. It talks about a number of things. It talked about transitioning students back, you know, students that were on remote learning back to in-person instruction this year and the supports we put in place. I know many of you will remember the presentation, excuse me, that Dr. Balin did a few weeks ago talking about all the supports we have in our schools. Dr. Bill and Assistant Superintendent Skanzuzo, everyone's been reporting on that. All that information is in this document. It's a very dense document, 17 pages, very small font. So there's a lot of information there. Thank you. And I saw the way that you accessed it. I'm going to ask Nick to do it once again, if that's okay. Just nice and slow. So you're on the district website and you go to About Us, mm -hmm. Board of Education. Education. Board Docs. From Board Docs, you're going to click on our meeting date, open the agenda, and scroll down to 12B. There it is. Click on the attachment. Thank you for that. Um, so often we mention Board Docs this, Board Docs that, and I think mm -hmm. it's really important that we take the time to show exactly how to access it because it can be a little intimidating if someone's never gone to it and doesn't know what, you know, what we're talking about as board members. And then for us on the board, whenever we have a community member that asks us a question of what is the district doing about X, Y, Z, 
this document is a really great document to show exactly what's being done for a particular area because it's broken down by different departments and sections. You've got your goals and you've got your action plans and next steps. So I think it's um, imperative for us as board members to really know this document and be able to speak to it and direct people to it. Mrs. Van Sice. Just a, a, something that I'm thinking about. So I believe many of our community members, many of our parents are asking, well, what are we doing? What are the next steps? Would it be feasible or appropriate to put this, this document, seeing that it's like a conclusive right now for this year on the district website? Um, I know it's housed in board docs. We could. But I, I wonder if there's people that aren't specifically looking maybe for something direct, but they're on the district website. They might click and open this and actually have this readily available document to just for the knowledge base of people of, oh, look what the district's doing. Oh, look at their, you know, for transparency reasons that it's just readily available and then even, I think the next steps is also key. Absolutely. Um, just to have our families see the document, understand the document, and also raise the confidence that look what our district is doing so that they could be familiarized and Absolutely. actually speak to it. Absolutely. And I, and I will say this, because this is a very good point. I know our first district-wide communications meeting is Thursday the 16th, right? And one of the things we're going to do is one of the things the board heard at one of the community forums is uh, parents and community members want an ease of accessing the website and the ease of maneuvering around the website. So I know that's on uh, Mr. Filipowski's list of things to do. So that'll be one of the things we'll be discussing at the communications committee. I know the first meeting is this Thursday. Uh, we won't dig right into it then, but it'll be a setup meeting. But that's one of the things that we do want to work on just to make sure we have documents and things that are easily accessible on our website. That sounds wonderful. And to Vice President Van Sice's point, like right now on the district website, there is a spot for annual goals where the goals are listed. So this would be a great place just at the end of that document to, to attach this, make the attachment because we already have the board goals and district goals listed. We could just easily make attach them. So right. Recommendation. Thank you. And so All if right. I may um, jump to 12C, our wellness council report. Yeah, just uh, before you do real quick, I'm I just sorry. wanted to see if there's anyone from the board that has any questions or comments oh, on absolutely. any of the district goals that we, I know we had a chance to review them because they've been available to us since Thursday. There is a lot of information there. Mr. Biscalia. My, mine wasn't on the goals. I just want to clarify something on the community update. Sure. Or, sorry. Um, just so the public hears, there's no impact on Wits email. So if a parent's emailing a teacher, that all stays the same once you guys are switching over Gmail. I, I understand it. I just yeah. want to make sure it's clear. It will. And that's why I wanted to state again that um, email addresses of staff will not change. It will still be, you know, like I'm D Brown hyphen hall at Williamsville K12.org. Mm -hmm. That all stays the same. It's just moving to Gmail. Thank you. Good question. Back to our goals. Are there any questions or comments? I just had one question. Um, it talks a little bit about, actually, I think my question was for the wellness report. Yep, I'll say that. It has to do with uh, the recommendation for um, schedule changes in elementary. So I'll change it. I'll save that for our next part. But thank you very much. Okay, so I think we're good. Awesome. Um, so at this time, Assistant Superintendent Scanzuzo will come up to introduce the wellness council report, and then we have a video that goes along with it. Thank you, Dr. Brown Hall, members of the Board of Education. Um, my honor to talk a little bit about our wellness uh, initiatives. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic posed a variety of challenges that our wellness program had to contend with. Uh, however, the building highlights noted in the body of this report provide evidence and, of the scope of activities and initiatives spearheaded by students, faculty, staff, parents, and administration. As has traditionally been the case, these range from a variety of service learning projects and fundraising activities to the prevention of risk-taking behaviors and development of healthy coping skills to those fostering relationships and building connections with others. We're proud of the efforts to provide a predictable, safe, and connected and caring classroom and school community for all of our students and staff. 
At the elementary buildings, um, all six elementary schools, the wellness committees were unified in promoting uh, so pro-social behaviors. Uh, these, these include kindness and respect towards one another, good decision-making, caring, personal responsibility, and safety awareness. At the middle school, the wellness program at each middle school so, um, is building specific, but united in the focus upon the development of the assets. And at the high school, consistent with our elementary and middle, um, their wellness facilitators and building-based teams implemented a wide variety of range, a wide variety of initiatives to promote the development of assets and address student resiliency, healthy choices, prevention, and positive decision making. And if Mr. Filipowski, you, you show the video that we have presented, uh, highlighting and depicting some of these uh, initiatives that were in this report, that'd be great. We wish to express our appreciation to the Board of Education and the entire school community for sustaining recognition of the importance of well, wellness programming and skill development and social emotional learning. We're grateful for the board's longstanding commitment to mental health, social and emotional well being, and resilience of students in our district, and for the vision necessary to provide support for this important work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments regarding the wellness report? Mrs. Beaker. So just a comment. Uh, I stated before that when I first came on the board that I was so surprised by the opportunities and great things happening in school that I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. This report it so beautifully shares all of the different things that are happening in schools. Um, you know, we talked before about wanting parents to be able to access and see. Um, it's incredible. And, you know, I'm reading through, I see the three schools that my three children go to and, oh, I remember this. I remember when they did that, you know, um, but to see what's happening in other schools is great. Mm -hmm. And um, what a beautiful job taking those things and quickly highlighting them to give us the visual. It's just outstanding. Um, for years, we've said we want to really focus more on the social emotional and the amount of examples of um, genuine, sincere opportunities that kids have had, um, all those different pieces of kindness and learning compassion and caring for others. It's such outstanding work. This report was like such a joy to read. So thank you to everyone who worked on this, not just the report, but the, the initiatives that came behind it. That I, I hope that 
parents and, and families access this. It's outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's uh, the credit goes to the buildings, uh, the wellness facilitators, the teams, parents, the students who buy into everything with their full hearts um, in an effort for us to um, connect our schools and our communities to one another. It really makes a difference for our kids. Thank you so much. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent Stanza, so I had one question. Um, I think one of the recommendations mm -hmm. about ensuring that there is adequate time in the elementary schedule for the SEL learning. And I think it's asking for like 30 minutes every two weeks. And that there should be a point for a counselor. Right. There so I'm, what? I was reading the same. I was going to be my question. So oh, okay. I take your thunder. No, <laughs> that's okay. Power, so. That's okay. I'm just curious. Um, I see it's a recommendation, but I'm just wondering, you know, do you foresee any schedule changing? I obviously, I understand this would be sort of a, a joint collaboration with Dr. Valen, but do you see any um, consideration for that in the future with our elementary schools so that it, the explicit instruction can take place? Absolutely. I mean, I think that th our, our focus is that it happens in the classroom. It has to happen in the classroom. This past year, we piloted um, uh, Prevention Focus. It was an outside organization that came in and worked with our kindergarten sc students at Forest and um, Maple East in Dodge. And um, they came in and they did 10 sessions. And, and what we're going to have them do next year is to come into all of our case, uh, all of our kindergarten classes at all six buildings next year, and provide those ten sessions um, of of prevention focus. Um, it worked out well this year. It wasn't an, an infringement on academics. Um, the first graders at Dodge Maple East and Forest are going to receive this as well uh, to continue in a spiraling program that was piloted this past year. So, um, you know, in an effort to move forward. We want to, as we come out of this pandemic, ultimately we like to see our teachers kind of play a bigger role in implementing wellness into activities and curriculum opportunities. Um, and, and, you know, it sounds easy, but it's just a matter of understanding when that takes place and, and how we can infuse that and provide those opportunities for wellness and SEL for our kids that parallel, you know, a, a lesson that's currently taking place. Okay, thank you. And I guess like to piggyback on that, on I, I'm glad to hear about the program being that was piloted and that that's going to expand. Correct. That's what you're saying. Okay. And then, um, in terms of the classroom teacher having the capacity to be able to sort of expand upon their instruction with SEL, is that being is is SEL professional development being considered as one of the um, opening days of schools? Mm -hmm. PD a absolutely, it, it is, and it was last year too. I'm sorry, Tony. Go ahead. So, so SEL restorative practices, diversity, equity, inclusion. It's all kind of wrapped up, and we're, we're finding ways to. It, it sounds like a lot when you when you unravel it, but we want to have it all kind of rolled into one and, and find. Um, a lot of opportunities for it to be connected with one another, and so in doing that, we'll we'll be, you know, we'll be we'll be kind of uh, um, killing multiple birds with one stone, and and that's really kind of the way we can roll this out and do it in a manner where it doesn't seem so siloed, individual. It's united, it's cohesive, and it's just part of what we're going to be doing from an instructional standpoint. Thank you so much. And I, I think this document is similar to the um, goals report in that it really highlights all of the good, good work that Mrs. Beaker just spoke about that's happening in all of our schools. And if a parent is specific about what's happening at my child's school, I mean, A, we would hope that they would ask at the building. But this is a document that's available that does break down um, building by building which I think is very helpful for parents to be able to see. This is a lot of work. Yep, Mrs. Van Seis. Might as well just get my last comments in right before I go. <laughs> um, but time and time again, we do hear where individuals are saying, we need to do more for mental health. Mm -hmm. What makes this document and those videos so important, it's look at what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's heartwarming to see what is going on in our schools. 
it is integrated into academic work, that social emotional learning component. Um, I absolutely love it because ultimately, not only are we focusing and having our children well-rounded, but they have good character because with all of those things that we just saw, they are helping others. So many of those things are helping others, but in doing that, what happens is they're helping themselves. They receive those coping skills and all of those essential life skills that they need. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. It was, it's a great final report to see um, and to step aside with that because it, it brings tears to your eyes just to see these children. And we all know that they've gone through so much, everyone has, but to see the good work coming out and how they're getting through it um, and building the connections, like mm -hmm. you said, is outstanding. Thank you. No, I think that what, you know, uh, Mr. Biscaglia mentioned when he visited his son's school this, this past mm -hmm. week uh, at Maple East and, or Maple West and, you know, you're seeing smiling faces, kids coming together. We're establishing a foundation for kids to start to learn how to care and um, and really cherish one another's company. And, uh, you know, from an inclusive standpoint to just being there for one another. And I think that, uh, um, you know, and facing adversity and how to deal with that, because we're going to face an awful lot of adversity uh, coming out of this pandemic. Um, I, I think we've made tremendous strides from where we we're in September to where we are now, and, and I hope we continue to move forward and just not have to look back um, and learn from all of this and know that we'll be better because of it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mr. Biscaglia, followed by Dr. McCurry. So to, to piggyback off what you just said, like one of the things just brought to my attention is, is you know, when you saw the kids playing, they were cheering each other on, which was nice to see, which is part of that social emotional learning. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter who you were, who you were friends with, you know, you, you were cheering them on and, and, and kids are going to face more adversity as time goes on. And those are lessons that they have to learn. I, my question was though, I, as I read it the other day, there was a bullet, uh, we, we support, we support the continued implementation of the comprehensive school counseling program plan for the 2022, 2023 school year. And it goes on to say that, um, that, there's a need to support an addition of 0.4 school counselor in every elementary school to supplement the classroom instruction at K through four. Is that something you plan on wanting to suggest in later years? Is this something I, where, where is that coming from? I guess that's what I'm asking for. So, so where some you of, want that to be. So the, so the funding that we have is, is going to help hope, potentially help us uh, knowing that the funding is going to dissipate over a few right. years, but to provide, uh, the counseling plan was written um, so that these these opportunities can take place in the classroom. And we know that, um, you know, right now we have school psychologists pushing in uh, classes, providing these educational opportunities um, that are part of the guidance plan. Social workers are, are doing the same. And having said that, um, you know, the, the guidance plan highly recommends that it come from counselors, but that that would be the the, the reason for the for the point two. Uh, or point forward at every at every uh, every building. So having a counselor in our elementary schools, um, you know, two days a week going in and, and going through curriculum, providing opportunities uh, that are consistent with the guidance plan that we put together like four years now. So yeah, and in to... and, 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 and an effort to have our staff members who are teachers watching and working alongside of what's being delivered, it would it's kind of like a transition for them in the event that that's something that cannot be supported, where staff members can now, you know, see how things were implemented from a counseling standpoint and make it part of their lessons and part of what they do as to how I uh, discussed earlier to address Mrs. Leatherbarrow's question. Yeah, I've, I've actually been, as a teacher, I've been part of those where counselors come into my classroom mm -hmm. and touch those lessons and it's, it's, it's invaluable. It's invaluable. So I think that's something we need to keep in mind as we go through budgets in the future. I, I, I you know, as we've all stated coming out of the pandemic. I mean, that really caught my idea. Try to pay attention to. I know it's budgets are tough. <laughs> I don't want to bother Mr. Matursky yet, but <laughs> um, something to keep an eye on and think about if, if this is a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And Dr. McClary, did you? Um, I certainly agree with all of the comments that have been said. The only thing I would like to add is um, I, I commend 
the committee certainly for all the work that's been going on. It's it's superb. Um, but the actual report itself is so well written and so detailed that it creates a visual for people to understand what's going on. So um, you know, I commend everyone for that. But I also hope that there will continue to be lots and lots of publicity about the things that are in the document and what we're doing, because we do still hear individuals, you know, like, oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? And it's so nice to be able to say, of course, we can always do more and we will do more, but this is what we've done. So there's a, again, the, the concrete, tangible thing, even if it's not tangible because it's on the computer, um, to just stress that it continues to be put out there so people see mm -hmm. all that's going on. Yeah, I know that uh, Dr. Brown Hall mentioned early on in his, in his uh, tenure with the district that this is something that should be printed. This document should be printed, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and the, the, the purpose of, of or the difficulty with that is it's such an ongoing thing that by the time you actually print it, it is it really encapsulating what we've current, what we're able to do for an entire year? Uh, maybe if it was something that reflects what we've done in the past, these are things that we're always building on um, from year to year because these initiatives are creative and they're, it's tough to be creative, you know, uh, but you know, you don't want to uh, stop doing things that kids are really buying into and loving to do. So um, it's just something that we're just going to continue to, to build on from year to year. But, you know, to that point, I know each school has a school handbook that gets updated, perhaps just a section of what that school is doing could be inserted into the handbook because it's it speaks to directly to the activities happening at each school. individual school. Ms. Kesmerick Bogner. Yeah, and on that note, um, a lot. Of, oh, excuse me, I'm having a hard time speaking tonight. Um, a lot of times at the PTSA meetings, the principals will highlight a lot yeah. of the wellness activities that are happening in the school. So that's another good reason to attend your buildings, PTSA meetings, you can learn about a lot of what's going on in the building. Yeah, every month, it's a great, it's a great point because we're updating everybody on what's happening because yes. majority of the time, the parents are part of the support network behind those initiatives. Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mrs. Bieger, followed by Ms. Poland. Perhaps just a quick suggestion. So if you go to the website and you find the little tab for youth wellness, they have the same report for last year which is equally wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that were happening, especially during those crazy times of different modes of, of instruction. Um, to your point, to showcase those things we're doing and how it is ongoing, I think it may be up for consideration for the district to think about how to leave those things there for historical. <laughs> Here's the 2021, um, you know, wellness report, 21-22, just to mm -hmm. show those different things you've done at school. Sometimes you keep doing the same thing. Sometimes they shift, but... Um, it's just so impressive. And so for it to be buried when you see that ongoing work and the different people working on it, I, I, I think it would be a really wonderful thing for parents to stumble upon if they're looking, what are we doing for wellness? Go to the wellness tab. This is right. what we did this year. This is what we did last year. We were kids going to this middle school this year. Look what they're doing. Um, it, it would be a great thing to highlight maybe in a little more of a, of a public way because it's great work. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm followed by Dr. Littman. Yes, I, I applaud everything that's been done. It's it's wonderful and having grandchildren that have enjoyed a lot of those activities. And I really appreciate what you're talking about and making that kind of an organic part yeah. of, of the school day and incorporated in that. And, and so just pushing that just envelope just a bit further, I would really hope that as a part of that and working with Dr. Balin, we could be really sensitive to digging deep and looking at our structures and are there things that we are doing either inadvertently or in sometimes intentionally that are adding to the stress of kids' lives? And can we modify some of the way we do school in certain circumstances? And I, I'm thinking about that particularly at the high school level where I hear a lot of things. So I'm just throwing that out there as our next step. So thank you for all you've done though. You're welcome, my pleasure. And I just want to thank you for all the work and all of the wellness work everyone does in this uh, district. But I just had a, con a question on the last one about supporting the implementation of a collaborative agreement with um, 
mental health community provider to host satellite offices. I don't know what the status of that is in discussion. Uh, and then maybe uh, knowing that middle school uh, sometimes is just as traumatic for that those young people. You know, would we eventually go that way also? But I guess I don't, I've not heard about that before until I've read the report. I just want to get some uh, input. Yeah, so we're looking to partner with Spectrum Cares. Uh, they will provide a licensed clinical social worker um, who will be rotating throughout the three high schools. Um, uh, they're, they're looking to secure a grant. Okay. Uh, so we are actually going to um, uh, pay for the first year's worth of services. And where it leads from there is, is really kind of, you know, we'll, we'll see where it's at. Now, we know that, um, you know, we, we always kind of use this term in our department that if, if we build it, they will come. And, and I'm, I'm like certain that by January, um, you know, th this, this person will, will be very busy. Um, you know, and, and, and rightfully so. And it's, it's, it's just another opportunity for us to have a resource available um, that's private and separate from what we do um, to help support kids and families that are really having a difficult time and really at that tier three level intervention piece where there's a lot of, there's just a, a lot of need um, and there's a lot of support that they need. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And Dr. Singh. Well, I just had a couple of comments similar to what Mary and uh, Maureen just said. But first, I want to thank you for letting me be a part of your committee for two years. Absolutely. And uh, at every committee meeting, we get a chance to see what's going on in different schools. And it's a pleasure to watch what's happening. Mm. And thank you for that, too. You're welcome. And uh, in regards to what uh, Mary was just saying, would it be possible to have like some sort of quarterly or a monthly newsletter because schools, one school might not see what the other school is doing mm -hmm. and the pictorial representation of what the other school has done, like a mon monthly newsletter, like Casey has done this, Haim has done this, would be like a great incentive for kids to see their pictures and what they have done and what others are doing. And parents can see that too mm -hmm. and see what all the great work you have been doing in different schools. Sure, it definitely could be an opportunity. I know that when we get together as wellness facilitators and we have our meeting, our monthly meetings, we do bounce a lot of ideas um, off of one another. So as far as I know, they, they like to keep some of their cards close to their vest. They don't want to, <laughs> they don't want to, you know, let everybody know what they're doing. But, um, you know, they like to be unique in that in that sense. There's this that that innate sense of, I don't want to say it's friendly competition, but it's just, it's, it's good. And how they're being creative and supporting different monthly initiatives um, that, uh, you know, that we're fostering. Um, you know, some of the buildings have just taken off with it and we provide them with like a monthly schedule as to some of the initiatives for next year already. So they're already thinking about, you know, how they're going to be creative and what that may look like. So that may be a great opportunity to, you know, provide maybe a quarterly type of situation where, we're highlighting or spotlighting some of the things that have transpired in all the schools uh, so that the district can see what's happening, not only in their school, but amongst all the other elementaries, middle and high schools. I mean, it's also great to see that some of these initiators are actually student ideas. Yes. And that's amazing. Yeah. And that, that's part of the leadership piece, you know, and what they do with it is uh, it's second to none. And I never uh, doubt, um, you know, our, our, the capabilities of our kids from the elementaries on up. Uh, because they just cease to amaze you every time. Absolutely. Never disappoint. The, Thank uh, you so much. The, one last, the oh, other thing I wanted to say was in uh, agreeing with what uh, Maureen was just said, if we could do something to alleviate the stress in high school kids, I know the, the high school kids make up their own schedule, they have their own plan, mm -hmm. but probably working with Dr. Balan or some anybody else, you would help, like maybe reduce, give them a break or give them less homework. I don't know. There's so many things you can think of. Sure. Now, I know that, you know, some of the buildings have stress-free days where teachers know that they don't give homework on that day. And um, so there, there's there's some creative things that, that kids are. And again, coming out of where we were, um, you know, it's, it's really fostering um, all those things that we've um, cherished over time, you know. And um, I'm hoping that, you know, like I said, we can learn a lot, put it in our rearview mirror and move forward and, and get back to 
um, you know, some of those great things that we were doing that maybe limited us a little bit this year. Um, but needless to say, um, we'll be back at it next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lisa. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Board members, we are moving on to our policy updates and item 12B. So may I have a motion to take from the table policy update 7554, student gender identity, and 3220, use of assistant, assistance animals, service animals, and therapy dogs. This is to take it from the table. Thank you, Mr. Boscalia and Mrs. Beaker. All in favor of taking it from the table. All hands up equals motion carries unanimously. And I now have a motion for the second reading and adoption of policy 7554 and 3220. Ms. Poland, thank you, and Dr. Littman. So this is our second month reviewing these policies, our second reading. Any discussion on either of these? Dr. Lynn? A quick question on, you know, part of this policy uh, talks about single occupancy uh, restrooms for individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I guess my question is, does each school have at least one of those facilities available for students? Yep. Just to make sure. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we definitely checked with that earlier in the year when we passed the policy. So, um, you know, and we, at, uh, I found the one here at, at district office. It's quite nice. It's got a little seating area in it. I was like, oh, there you go. Could, and it's spacious. And it's spacious. <laughs> you, you, you wanted to. Um, <laughs> the the updates over. are really merely just legal. So even though this was a policy mm -hmm. we passed earlier in the year, BOCES, provides uh, policy updates for us. They're just minor language changes. But that's a, a great question. And we can, now we'll Thanks. have to look when we go on our visit. You're going to be in charge of that. There you go. I will find them. Wander off. You better I will be find them. that. Answering those ones. All right. So. <laughs> Same thing in the aircraft carrier. With that, wander all in favor of approval. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. And we're going to do some first readings. Now, these are the 4,000 series. So thank you to the board members that participated in the review process for this. May I have a motion for the first reading of policy updates for the administration 4,000 level series as presented in board docs. So it's several policies that are being updated. This is our first reading. Ms. Poland, thank you. And Mrs. Beaker. And is there any discussion on any of these? Mrs. Kazmierek Faulkner. Yes, and I was on this committee, so I should know the answer to this, but I'm, it wasn't completely clear to me. In policy uh, 4220, one of the updates was a subtitle um, that read to change in absence of board policy to an absence of administrative authority. And I wondered if that should just read administrative authority, not in absence of. I questioned that too. <laughs> 20. Yeah, in, in 4220, it was a subtitle change from in, abs in the absence of board policy to in the absence of administrative authority, but I believe it should just be administrative, administrative authority as a subtitle. I think that, yeah, we'll make that change. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Because that's the name of the policy to begin with. Yeah. This is, All yeah, right. Yeah. Good touch. All right. Any other questions on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you're amending, are you amending the motion then so that when we're approving, well, we're not approving the policy. It's just the first just reading, right? Yes. Okay. So that can be um, edited before the it's brought reading. for the second Correct. reading. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, so we've already made the motion for this reading and we've had discussion. Is there any additional discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Opposed or abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. And now in order to table these policies, may I please have a motion to table these policies for a second reading and adoption at our July 5th meeting. Thank you, Ms. Poulin and Dr. McCleary. All in favor? 
All hands up equals motion carries unanimously. Now moving on to our finance items listed in 13. May I please have a motion to resolve to approve and adopt the following items. 13A, BOCES installment purchase agreement. 13B, lease agreement for the Chinese Club of Western New York. 13C, summer lease agreements for Williamsville South Stampede Field Hockey. And 13D, the resolution calling for the approval of the bond proposition for the air conditioning project as presented. Thank you, Vice President Van Sice. May I have a second? Thank you, Mrs. Beeger. Any discussion on any of these items? Seeing none, all in favor? All hands up equals motion carries unanimously. Item 14 is our liaison reports. Would anyone like to report on a meeting or event recently attended? Um, I would just for a moment, please. Thanks. Um, something that came up in one of the buildings where I'm a liaison this last month, I just wanted to share. And it goes along uh, with what you shared, Dr. Brown Hall, in your uh, update regarding safety. And if you see something, say something, of course, that's of utmost importance. Um, what came from our conversation is to make sure that you're saying something to administration in a building or a teacher. Uh, there was a situation where a parent had heard a concern or a rumor and went to social media with that concern. Um, and while social media has many, um, you know, valid and wonderful purposes, um, by doing this, this um, rumor was about a threat was completely untrue, and it caused a lot of concern. On, uh, you know, which makes sense for families. And and the school then did receive many phone calls, um, and the administration was very happy to clear things up and, and shared you know clarity with the school community. Um, but just reflecting on that, I'd really like to encourage our. Um, friends and family in the Williamsville community out there to make sure that if you have a concern, please, please call your school. The administrators are there. Um, they want to hear from you. They will give you valid information and accuracy. Um, we want to make sure that accurate information is out there. If there is anything wrong, the school will let you know. Um, if you know anything, please bring it to the school's attention so they can look into it. Our um, partnership with Amherst Police is outstanding. Um, I have full confidence that any concern about a threat that they will look into and treat seriously. Um, but when we share rumors uh, in a world where it goes out to thousands at once, that hurts our community. And it, it's just not fair to make um, kids and families worry unnecessarily. So um, that's my soapbox before I go is please, if you have concerns, questions, call your school there or check the newsletter or read the information. There's really a lot of people there that want to help and make sure you get that accurate information. Um, and if you're reading things that don't come directly from the school, it's hard to know if that is or is not accurate. Thank you for that, Ms. Yeah. because I remember the report you, you submitted and it, it seems as if on that particular day, a lot of resources, a lot of staff and time was spent um, pretty much like just like calming down parents who were sort of alerted unnecessarily. Exactly right. So to, to the see something, say something, yes, but who you, who do you say it to? Right. Is Correct. really important. If you see something, call your school. Right. Call the principal. Just a quick, yes. whoever answers the phone in the main office could have easily Dispelled put that, that parent at right. ease before it had to go to where it went. So thank, thank you, Mrs. Speaker. Does anyone else wish to share anything from a recent meeting or event? All right. Um, I just want to share that a liaison assignments for next year will be a discussion item for the July 5th board meeting, and then they will be finalized at the August meeting. Assignments will be district-wide liaisons which is basically our PTSA and SEPSA and a few other district assignments. ECASB has a couple committees. And then um, once those are filled, then if there's board members that wish to, to rejoin 
either the communications team or the DEI team or the wellness team will fill those as well. But we want to make sure that we get a rep for each school for PTSA. That's, that's uh, very important that we continue that. And um, in accordance with policy 1312, the, pre the board president will determine assignments and, and coordinate with the district clerk. And we typically do give preference to a board member that has a child of their own that attends the school. That way you're not having to attend double the amount of meetings. All right, any questions or comments on that? All right, and um, Mrs. Carey, do you know if the PTA meetings have submitted um, their schedules for next year yet of when their meetings are going to be? Okay, because okay. that would be good. And that helps us as board members to know if a particular school is going to always pick the same night. You know, we want to make sure we take assignments that we are available to attend. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I don't see any items listed for 15 or 16. Um, so for 17, may I please have a motion to resolve and approve the resolution for the 2022-2023 summer hiring of 17A and the confidential contract modifications of 17B. Thank you, Vice President Van Syf. May I have a second? Mrs. Beeger, thank you. Is there any discussion? I just want to share um, my support for the changes for 17B and share that um, I believe this individual is extremely hardworking, dedicated, and a huge asset to our district. All right. Any other You're here. Comments? <laughs> Cheers to that. Amen. Cheers to that. All in favor? All hands up equals motion carries unanimously. All right. Dr. Brown Hall, I turn it to you to 18A or facility update. Absolutely. So I, I did mention some of it in the community update. I spoke about the security project. So I'll let you know. Um, and it's very clear in board docs, along with the picture that Assistant Superintendent Matursky submitted. So you can see the progress that has taken place. But the construction work that began at Country Parkway, Mill, Maple, East, and Forest um, during the April recess has proceeded extremely well to date. So that will all be completed by the start of school for the 22 school year. And then every other school will begin next year so that they will all then be complete by the start of the 20 September 2023. And over the summer, there'll be secu um, security project in conjunction has the roof work. So North High School, Country Parkway, Forest, and Maple East are scheduled to have their roofs replaced this summer. Excellent. Do you think it would be possible for us to see one of these over the summer? Absolutely. That would be fun. I'd like to see the change. Now, do you want to... Uh, Oh, so you're talking about the security project, not the roof work, of course. Okay, never mind. I don't, I don't. Everyone just needs a roof. I'm like, we have to do it on a sunny day because if it's raining, they they won't be doing the roof work. But yeah, the security project, absolutely. Well, we can definitely. Stuff roof. We can definitely, and they. I mean, it, it's great progress that's um, taking place. The, the, so, yeah, let's set up a time. Interest in that from the board to see the the finished security updates at one or two of the schools one mornings in the summer. Yep. Perfect. It, so let's wait till August. August. Why don't we do it right before. Or the day of the August board meeting, or right before the August board meeting, meet over there first and come over to district. That would be office. nice. Okay, sounds good. All right, and for a seven or sorry, eighteen B, may I please have a motion to resolve and approve the adjustment of capital project change order authority as presented? Ms. Kazmarek Bogner, Mrs. Beeger, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. There's nothing listed for item 19. Anyone have an item to discuss under Committee of the Whole? Dr. Littman. Something I forgot to mention before, but, you know, it's just a thank you to President Leatherbarrow for her work through this year and the other years as she steps to the side of the table for the short term. So, <laughs> Just want to thank you for that. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's been an honor to serve as president, and I'm ready for someone else to hold the gavel because <laughs> I'm going to turn it into a hatchet. <laughs> Throw it. Just one side. Just one side. Yep. Be right. 
-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Anybody else have comments for Committee of the Whole? All right. Does anyone have any correspondence that they wish to share? Okay, we did receive a letter from a student who was um, asking if we could consider um, revising our physical education program if, if they were already in a sport. They were making a decent argument um, as to, you know, if they're already in a sport do they still need to participate in physical education during the day? And I did send this individual back um, information that comes right from the state education department with it being a requirement from state ed. There are some things that are local control where we have authority, but that's not one of them. So we appreciate and wellness, that. baby. And I, like I told my own children, when you get to college, you don't have to take yeah. PE unless you want to. So, yeah. dance, so you never know. I did ballroom dance too. He loved it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So with that, um, we are going to be going into a second executive session. I want to share that our next board meeting is July 5th. I want to thank everyone in attendance. Um, it's been a wonderful opportunity to serve as president. And I'm looking forward to sitting in one of the other chairs next year. Um, so may I please have a motion to adjourn into executive session to discuss current litigation. Oh, I'm sorry. We're only going to finish up our discussion of the superintendent's performance review. That's the only item left for executive session tonight. Mrs. Beeger, followed by Mrs. Poland. Thank you. All in favor? All hands up equals motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>